Hi everyone, welcome back to Global Academy of Medical Education. So in this session, let us see which are all the pharmacology MCQs that have been asked in your NSIT May 2023. So myself, Dr. Padmanabha TS, Pharmacology Faculty at Global Academy of Medical Education. So the first question will be concentrating is the alkalinization of the urine. So some said there was a question on alkalinization of the urine. So either they would have asked regarding the name of the drugs where you require the alkalinization of the urine. That means alkalinization of urine is required in some type of poisoning. So alkalization is done in case of poisoning due to poisoning due to weak acidic drugs weak acidic drugs weak acidic drugs so which are all the acidic drugs example so please remember the acidic drug examples are it can be of aspirin it can be of your barbiturates it can be of penicillins it can be of methotrexate methotrexate and it can be of sulfonamide sulfonamides so these are the acidic weak acidic drugs in weak acidic drug poisoning you need to go for you need to go for alkalinization of the urine alkalinization of the urine so how to do alkalinization of the urine so please remember alkalization of the urine is done by using the sodium bicarbonate you can use sodium bicarbonate or you can go for carbonic anhydrase inhibitor like acetazolamide acetazolamide zolamide so then what is the other group of drugs where you need to go for acidification of the urine so please remember acidification of urine acidification of urine when do we do acidification of urine whenever there is a whenever there is a weak basic drug poisoning so which are all the basic drugs you know which are all the basic drugs you know so we have atropine we have atropine you have morphine morphine you have amphetamine amphetamine you have quinine so what is the common thing you observed in case of weak basic drugs? So usually the weak basic drugs, they are ending with INE, INE, INE and INE. So in such drugs, you need to go for acidification of the urine. So how to do acidification of the urine? So acidification of the urine is done by using ammonium chloride, ammonium chloride or you can go with the ascorbic acid ascorbic acid that is vitamin c ascorbic acid vitamin c so if in your exam if they asked about which is the following drugs which require alkalinization of the urine then you should go for these drugs then you should go for these drugs that is the weak acidic drugs if they were asked regarding so which of the following can be used for alkalization of the urine if they had given an option 
ammonium sodium bicarbonate or the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor you can go with these drugs so i think option can be of vitamin c ascorbic acid as well as the sodium bicarbonate and other options so if they have asked about the uh, substance which is used for alkalinization of the urine you should go for sodium bicarbonate or the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor so if they asked about which are the following drug where you require alkalinization of the urine so you should go for the weak acidic drugs like aspirin barbiturates penicillin methotrexate and the sulfonamide is that clear okay fine the second question which was asked in your exam was they told that the oral contraceptive pills can reduce the risk of which cancers so please remember the oral contraceptive pills usually it will reduces the risk of the endometrial carcinoma it will reduce the risk of endometrial carcinoma it reduces the ovarian carcinoma it reduces the ovarian carcinoma and also it prevents the also it helps in prevention of colorectal carcinomas colorectal carcinomas so if this was in the option you should have selected the you should have selected the endometrial carcinomas or ovarian carcinoma or you should have gone for colorectal carcinoma is that clear fine we'll move on to the third question that was asked so this was a new thing which was asked in your exams that is the uh, which is the new drug which is the new drug which is approved for red syndrome so as you know that what is red syndrome red syndrome is a genetic disorder it is a genetic disorder which going to affect the children of the age between 8 to 18 years or 6 to 18 years 6 to 18 years so usually it affects the brain usually it affects the brain so the drug of the preferred drug or the new drug which was approved recently is the trophenetide trophenetide so please remember recent drug is the tro fine tide tro fine tide tro fine tide so let us uh, understand what is trophenetide so this can be your potential mcq in the upcoming further exams too so trophenetide as you can see trophenetide is a synthetic analog which is derived from the neurotropic peptide neurotropic peptide neurotropic peptide it is a terminal tripeptide of the insulin like growth factor 1 which are produced by the brain cells so it is nothing but the it is the neurotropic peptide basically it is a neurotropic peptide which is derived from the brain cells which are derived from the brain cells so how it functions you should also know how it functions basically so trophenetide will basically will decrease the inflammatory reactions will decrease the inflammatory reactions so basically it will going to reduce the inflammation reduce the inflammation that is especially the neuro inflammation and also important function is it will going to support the synaptic function how it will going to stimulate the synaptic maturation by stimulating the synaptic maturation it will going to overcome the synaptic and neuronal immaturities so basically it is doing two things so what is it is reducing the inflammation it reduces the inflammation as well it stimulate the synaptic function synaptic maturation it helps in reducing the inflammation as well as the stimulating the synaptic maturation so the new drug you should remember it is the trophenetide so next question was a google question so please note that uh, uh, even uh, the expert will also not be able to answer this if you have left out this question no problem but please remember the keynote 189 trial the keynote 189 clinical trial clinical trial is done with respect to the pembrolizumab 
pembrolizumab so basically not only with the pembrolizumab pembrolizumab along with the other chemo agents other chemo agents so here the answer is so what is the question the keynote trial 189 monoclonal antibody in case of lung cancer is related with the option which is correct is the pembrolizumab chemo given for non small cell car non small cell lung cancers non small cell lung cancers so please remember the both pembrolizumab as well as nivolumab is used in the treatment of the non small cell lung cancers but the keynote trial is basically done with respect to the with respect to the pembrolizumab pembrolizumab so let us see what is this trial so this keynote 189 trial is done in case of the combination of pemetrexide as well as platinum chemotherapy with or without the pembrolizumab so basically it is a study of pemetrexide in combination with platinum chemotherapy with or without pembrolizumab in participant with first line metastatic non squamous non small cell lung cancers so it is not only the pembrolizumab so it is the combination so it involves the pemetrexide as well as the platinum chemotherapy with or without the pembrolizumab so this is the a uh, a uh, uh, study which is under the keynote which is called as the keynote 189 trial so let us see what is pembrolizumab and nevolumab so pembrolizumab is a fully monoclonal monoclonal antibody it is fully humanized igg4 monoclonal antibody which are against the pd1 antigen so what is pd1 antigen pd1 antigen it is the program death receptors so pembrolizumab is the monoclonal antibody which is a fully immunized ig g4 monoclonal antibody which are against the programmed death one receptor antigen so they are also useful in the treatment of conditions like melanoma uh, already we saw it also useful in case of non small cell carcinoma and in case of hodgkin's lymphoma uro urothelial carcinomas and gastric cancers so please remember pembrolizumab is with respect to the lung cancer and it is a, it is the one drug which is tried in the keynote trial keynote trial that is keynote trial 189 189 189 so apart from that they are also used in case of merkel cell carcinoma in case of cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma and also they are being used for prevention of the returning of melanoma after surgeries so coming to the fifth question again this is one this is also a googly question so if you are not done this don't worry you would have done the other question very well so if you feel that this question was tough it will be tough for others also so vancomycin vancomycin nomogram that is the which is the scale or the equation which is used for the adjustment of the vancomycin dose so how to titrate the vancomycin dose so vancomycin nomogram when i went through the literature we got uh, i got this uh, 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 study which was published they said that they said that uh, i'll read out for you individualized adjustment of vancomycin dosage based on measured serum concentration is significantly more precise than use of nomograms is it clear so individual adjustment of vancomycin dose based on the measurement of their serum concentration it is more precise than the use of the nomograms use of the nomograms so individualization is better than the nomogram so okay this method should be employed in clinical setting to monitor and adjust vancomycin therapy so only the nomogram is the suggestions or the guidelines which can be used for titrating the dose in the clinical setting for initiating the vancomycin therapy and for adjusting the vancomycin dosage in situation where serum concentration monitoring is unavailable you can go for the nomograms otherwise the individual 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 
adjustment has to be done adjustment has to be done if this monitoring is not available serum concentration monitoring is not available <coughs> excuse me if the serum concentration monitoring is not available you can go for nomogram you can go for the nomograms so here we have a two nomograms which are the two nomograms we have a uh, we have mutsky nomogram as well as the moller mollering nomogram mollering nomogram so let us see which is the best nomogram here so metsky appears to be reasonable approach they say that metsky uh, uh, nomogram appears to be reasonable approach and mollering nomogram is significantly less accurate than either the individualized method or the metsky nomogram so mollering nomogram is less accurate when compared to the metsky nomogram so please remember whenever they ask the you know, vancomycin nomogram please remember it with respect to the how to remember how to remember this vancomycin so when you write v when you write v v what you want to do is you put two lines what what it will become it will become m so next what is the next letter of vancomycin it is a it is a so we have ma here also we have ma it is mutsky 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 nomogram is the more accurate nomogram in adjusting the vancomycin dose when compared to the mollering nomogram is that clear fine so next coming to the sixth uh, mcq that was asked which was direct question and it was easy to uh, so which of the following is true they were asking true please remember it is true what is the which is the following statement is true about the lithium lithium let us find out which is the true statement so fine post tremors occurs at the normal dose or the therapeutic dose so this is the this is the correct statement so it is not absorbed from jt please remember that it is a wrong statement it is completely it is completely absorbed from the jt completely absorbed from the jt it does not cause a teratogenicity this is the wrong statement it causes abstinence anomaly which is related to the cardiovascular system cardiovascular system it causes teratogenicity it used in the treatment of absence seizure it is not used in case of absence seizure you can you will go with the preferred drug is the sodium valproate or based on the age you can go for ito succimide ito succimide so here the true statement about lithium is at normal dose it causes the fine tremors at the therapeutic dose is the right answer and also you should remember that so how to treat this fine tremors which are occurring due to lithium at the therapeutic doses you can give a beta blocker which is the beta blocker which is preferred here you can go with the propranolol propranolol okay we'll move on to the seventh question that was asked so there was a patient uh, with schizophrenia is being treated with clozapine is being treated with clozapine and the patient has to undergo regular blood monitoring because of which of the following rare side effect so whenever we go for the clozapine so please remember whenever the patient is given with clozapine which is a atypical antipsychotic atypical anti psychotic so please remember this atypical anti psychotic very rare side effect is the a granulo a granulo cytosis a granulo cytosis so that's why you need to go for regular blood monitoring regular blood monitoring so which are the usually which are the drugs which are monitored which are the uh, 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 blood parameters which you will going to monitor you will going to monitor the absolute 
neutrophil count as well as differential leukocyte count so usually this will be for weekly weekly monitoring is done weekly monitoring is done if for the a granulocytosis detection so here the right answer is a rare side effect that requires a regular blood monitoring is the a granulocytosis a granulocytosis which is frequently asked in your exams so close up in a granulocytosis is that clear fine next coming to the eighth question that is a uh, 35 year old male presents to surgery emergency with priapism as you know priapism so uh, some said uh, the priapism word was given in the question itself and uh, some said there was the painful uh, persistent erection statement was included in the question so let it be anything so priapism means a painful persistent erection uh, which lasted for f f seven hours so he has a history of mood disorder and was recently prescribed a medication by treating by treating psychiatrist so which is the likely offending drug so we need to find out which is the so since he has got a history of mood disorder so here you need to find out which is the uh, antidepressant drugs uh, uh, which has been uh, responsible for priapism or the painful persistent erection which remained for a long duration of time that is the seven hours seven hours so we have an option like mirtazapine venalafaxin trazodone and bupropion this is bupropion so please remember these classical drug which is causing priapism is the your anti antidepressant antidepressant so which is the antidepressant which is causing priapism so please remember priapism with respect to the trazodone trazodone is causing the priapism side effect mainly because of the alpha blocking activity alpha blocking activity priapism painful erection of the uh, penis painful erection will be there whenever the patient is on trazodone trazodone along with that he will also suffer from the hypo tension hypo tension hypo tension so because of this this utility has been decreased so this utility utility of the drug has been reduced nowadays so which is the correct answer here that is a trazodone trazodone is responsible for the priapism so let us understand a, a little bit of the trazodone so trazodone is a atypical it is first atypical antidepressant it is less efficiently blocks serotonin uptake it blocks serotonin uptake it prominently inhibits the alpha adrenergic action it has alpha blocking activity and also it has got 5-HT2 antagonistic activity so which is responsible for the priapism and the postural hypotension so please remember it is your alpha blocking activity which is responsible for these two activities that is inappropriate prolonged painful penile erection it is called as priapism here in the case you saw it was prolonged it was for seven hours it was for seven hours and also it can lead to postural hypotension because of these uh, side effects uh, uh, which are caused by trazodone they are infrequent they are infrequently used for treating depression unless which is associated with insomnia so if it is associated with insomnia they can go for trazodone but they are not used frequently because of the side effects such as priapism as well as the postural hypotension next moving on to the ninth mcq that was asked uh, the female patient uh, with the history of diabetics uh, was given some oral drug please remember oral drug and it reduced the hba1c glycosylated hemoglobin by 7.6 to 6.7 and the patient had high GIP as well as the GLP-1 levels with the low glucagon, low glucagon. So please remember, so you need to rule out the oral and injectable anti-diabetic drugs. So here liraglutide, liraglutide is a incretin. So please remember it is a incretin. 
so it is given by injectable root injectable root injectable root subcutaneously that is subcutaneously so this is ruled out this is ruled out then left out is this is given orally even this is given orally and this is given orally oglibose metformin and alogliptin is given orally so alogliptin it is a it is a dpp4 inhibitor it is a dipeptidyl peptidase inhibitor whereas metformin is a biguanid biguanid and oglibose is a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor 5 alpha reductase inhibitor so oglibose belongs to the same group such as the acarbose acarbose so here uh, please remember so which is the drug since you are inhibiting the dpp4 dipeptidyl peptidase is responsible for breakdown of these breakdown of the d sorry so dpp is responsible for breakdown of breakdown of gip as well as the glp glp since you are now inhibiting this activity what will happen to the breakdown breakdown is inhibited and what will happen to the levels of gip and glp gip and glp1 will going to increase so then this should be the action uh, which will be the drug which was given which reduced the hba1c level as well as uh, the the gip and glp levels were increased with low glucagon levels the answer will be your alogliptin alogliptin which is the gliptins gliptins so we have other gliptins like to remember some of the gliptins you have cetagliptin we have saxagliptin we have wildagliptin we have alogliptin etc etc so all these are dpp4 inhibitors dpp4 inhibitors where they are going to increase the gip as well as the glp1 levels is that clear okay liraglutide liraglutide is a incretin it is a incretin which is in the form of injectables they are given through subcutaneous route so this is the diagram which was taken from the kd tripathi showing that you can see here so here we have a dpp4 enzyme so this dpp4 enzyme will be inhibited by this dpp4 enzyme will be inhibited by gliptins 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 so what will happen we have citagliptin wildagliptin so this inhibit the dp4 activity thereby the increases the levels of the glp1 and gip what are glp1 and gip glp1 means glucagon like peptide and glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide levels will be increased so then the answer will be your gliptin group so the answer will be your gliptin here hello gliptin so next uh, and also you should also see that when we compare the oglibose so this can be your potential mcqs metformin so which is responsible for the highest reduction in the hba1c levels so you can see here oglibose will also reduces the hba1c level by 0.4 to 0.8 but metformin reduces the hba1c level by 0.8 to 1.2 so metformin has got more propensity to reduce the hba1c level when compared to the ogli boss coming to the 10th mcq a lady presented with vulvo vaginal pruritus vulvo vaginal pruritus so it is indicating some urinary tract infection urinary tract infection urinary tract infection who was on anti diabetic medication so which is the probable drug which is responsible for it so please remember in case of anti diabetic drug there is one specific drug which increases the risk of urogenital infections urogenital infections so which is the drug which increases urogenital infections or urinary tract infection that is your 
SGLT2 inhibitors. So when you take a nephrons, so if this is a nephrons, nephrons, so it is in this area that is in the proximal convoluted tubule, you will have a you will have a SGLT, you will have a SGLT transporter, SGLT transport, this is G, SGLT transporter, which is responsible for the absorption of, absorption of glucose, absorption of glucose. So SGLT transporter is, uh, SGLT2 transporter is responsible for absorption of the glucose, absorption. So glucose will be absorbed, glucose will be absorbed. What happens when you give a, what happens when you give a SGLT2 inhibitor? So SGLT2 inhibitor inhibit and in the urinary tract there will be in the nephrons, in the nephrons there will be increased in the glucose content, increase in the glucose content. This leads to glucosuria, glucosuria. So glucose will be excreted. So glucose, whatever the glucose here, this will be coming out and it will be excreted out, excreted excreted and this is responsible for since glucose is there in the urinary tract this is responsible for the urogenital or gen, uh, genital tract infection urinary tract infections so examples of sglt2 inhibitor are canagliflozin as well as dupagli dupagli Flocin, canagliflozin and dapagliflozin. So how to remember this? So you have canagliflozin. So, so please remember GL flow in. So this is glucose, glucose flows flows where flows in urine flows in urine which will lead to glucosuria glucosuria which is responsible for urinary tract infection urinary tract infection so here the right option which is increasing the inner tract that is vulvovaginal pruritus especially in case of females 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 are more prone for urinary tract infection so you have a lady lady presenting with the urinary tract infection so the right answer here is the canagliflozin is the right answer usually a curb loss will going to cause floating sensation bloating or it causes bloating bloating sensation in the stomach bloating sensation in the stomach is that clear okay fine next going to the 11th question that was asked that is a morphine antidote some said there was a case history which was given which was saying the use of pethidine and there was a increased uh, dose of the pethidine which led to the symptoms of the opium overdose and there was a classical uh, uh, symptom which was given in the case that is a pinpoint pupil so usually the morphine or opiate group of drug whenever there is a opiate toxicity please remember whenever there is a opioid opioid toxicity opioid toxicity so classical sign you're going to see is the pinpoint pupils so pinpoint pupil will the classical feature of the opiate toxicity so morphine belongs to opiate so what will be the antidote antidote is your naloxone antidote is your naloxone naloxone is that clear so even in case of organophosphorus compound poisoning poisoning what will happen the eye will be constricted but not as classic to that of the opiate which will have a pinpoint pupil but whereas in case of op compound poisoning the drug of choice will be your drug of choice to treat or the antidote the antidote will be your atropine 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 and to reactivate the reactivate the enzymes acetylcholinesterase activity will be giving the oxymes oxymes is that clear okay fine next going to the 12th mcq 
uh, uh, they also uh, some of them said that there was a question on the therapeutic index therapeutic index so some said there was uh, four options with uh, long sentences so please remember uh, if you can remember this statement this is the a basic concept of the therapeutic index so therapeutic index is nothing but the ld50 divided by ed50 so what does ld stands for ld stands for lethal dose lethal dose and ed stands for effective dose effective dose what do you understand by 50 here 50 it is the dose which is required to produce the harmful effect or lethal effect in 50% of the population 50% of the population what about the effective dose it is the dose which is required to produce a beneficial effect produce the beneficial effect in 50% of the population 50% of the population it is nothing but the it is the therapeutic index is the ld50 by ed50 it is a measure of safety margin it is a measure of safety margin or they also called as safety index they also call it as safety index safety index so basically when you plot a diagram so this will be your dose and this will be the response curve on the y axis and the y axis this will be your x axis when you plot a graph when you plot a graph so let's say this is the minimal therapeutic dose which is required to produce the effect and this is the maximal dose which is produced to produce the effect when you plot a graph so this will be your this will be your ed50 and this will be your ld50 ld for example let us take one example so this can be your uh, potential mcqs in the upcoming exam to in the next exam too so they'll ask ed50 was ed50 was ed50 was 50 50 and ld50 was 100 100 milligrams so what will be your therapeutic index therapeutic index what we said ld50 by ed50 so ld50 was 100 milligram ed50 was 50 milligram so it is your 2 so therapeutic index is 2 therapeutic index or safety margin is 2 2 here so next moving on to the 13th question how to positive trans or uh, two positive trastuzumab resistant resistant breast carcinoma treatment what is the treatment for uh, 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 the, for the patient with breast carcinoma where trastuzumab is resistant so in such case what will be the drug of uh, uh, preferred here in the treatment of breast carcinoma let us see let us rule out one by one so erlotinib erlotinib so erlotinib uh, how it sounds erlo low it is the lung erlo means it is lung lung so it is used in case of the lung carcinomas lung ca these are also used in case of advanced pancreatic carcinoma advanced pancreatic carcinomas what about the vemurafenib 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 please remember it uh, lead it is a drug which is used for the treatment of malignant malignant melanoma malignant melanoma how to prevent so if you add a letter for v it looks like m m that is for malignant melanoma malignant melanoma so sorafenib sorafenib is basically used in two things one if the liver source liver source so it is used in hepatocellular carcinoma as well as r r sore it is the renal cell carcinoma renal cell carcinoma established renal cell carcinoma or end stage renal carcinomas so lapatinib lap you can remember l for lump where is lump is present lump is present in the breast lump is present in the breast so here the right answer will be your lapatinib which is the drug which is preferred in case of trastuzumab resistant breast carcinoma basically lapatinib is the tyrosine 
kinase inhibitor tyrosine kinase inhibitors so it is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor so next moving on to the 14th mcq that is a kid or a child went to the temple with with grandmother or grandfather so and the kid started crying and bp uh, crying suddenly and uh, the grandmother took to the hospital and the bp was high bp was high 150 by 90 it is hypertension so heart rate was very high the peripheries were very cold in nature so usually this type of symptoms the increase in the blood pressure as well as the cold periphery with the high heart rate will mimic to that of the scorpion scorpion bite scorpion sting bite or a scorpion scorpion poisoning so which is the preferred drug in case of scorpion poisoning so please remember all the increase in the blood pressure increased in the heart rate and cold peripheries all are the symptoms of the symptoms of the increased increased sympathetic activity increased sympathetic activity means this scorpion has got a poisoning which will going to stimulate the alpha receptors there is an increased activity due to alpha mediated stimulation alpha mediated stimulation so in such individuals uh, can we give adrenaline adrenaline will going to will going to increase the symptoms that's why they are not giving it is a sympatho sympathetic drug it is a sympathetic drug it is not given can we give anti snake venom no we, we do not have a confirmation that snake has bitten the child so it cannot be given can we give methyl prednisolone can be given as a secondary measure but not as the first preferred drug so since it is due to the alpha mediated sympathetic activity you can go with the prazosin which is a alpha blocker which is a alpha blocker here is the preferred drug for this case is the prazosin prazosin so next moving on to the 15th question so there is a confusion regarding whether this question was asked or not some of them said they asked uh, in the form of match the following beta blockers so let it be the, the following or if they asked uh, particularly about choosing the beta blockers also let us find out here merobegron is basically a beta 3 receptor agonist beta 3 receptor agonist whereas betoxalol it is a selective selective beta blocker and isoprenaline is a beta 1 as well as beta 2 agonist beta 2 agonist so if they have asked about beta blocker then the correct option will be your bitoxolol so where do we use bitoxolol bitoxolol is basically used topically topically in the form of drops to treat the glaucoma in the treatment of glaucoma in the treatment of glaucoma basically it will going to reduce the secretions secretions which secretion acquiesce humor secretions thereby it reduces the intraocular pressure intraocular pressure so where do we use this mirabegron mirabegron is a beta 3 agonist so basically beta 3 agonist will going to cause relaxation relaxation of smooth muscles especially in the bladder 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 so you can mirabegron b stands for bladder b stands for bladder so basically they are used to treat the overactive bladder overactive bladder overactive overactive bladder so what about the isoprenaline isoprenaline has got beta 1 activity it can stimulate the heart as well it can produce the bronchodilation by acting on the beta 2 receptors which are present in the lungs so please remember beta blocker betoxolol merobegron beta 3 agonist uh, they cause relaxation of the bladder which are preferred in case of overactive bladder overactive bladder so next coming to the 16th one they also mentioned that there was a, a, a question on dog bite in a patient who was vaccinated in a patient who was vaccinated patient with vaccination history patient with vaccination history so they're asking to choose a 
एंटीबायोटिक एंटीबायोटिक प्रिफर्ड हियर एंटीबायोटिक प्रिफर्ड सो बेसिकली एंटीबायोटिक विल बी प्रिफर्ड इन केस ऑफ द कैटेगरी थ्री बाइट कैटेगरी थ्री बाइट देर आर कैट वन टू एज वेल एज थ्री कैटेगरी बेस्ड ऑन दैट यू नीड टू गो फॉर द ट्रीटमेंट नीड टू गो फॉर द ट्रीटमेंट सो इज द प्रिफर्ड एंटीबायोटिक विल बी योर ब्रॉड स्पेक्ट्रम एंटीबायोटिक सो बेसिकली यूल गो विद द अमोक्सिक्लेव दैट इज द अमोक्सिसन एंड द क्लेवलिनिक एसिड क्लेवलिनिक एसिड वेदर द स्टेटस इज वैक्सीनेटेड और नॉट द एंटीबायोटिक प्रिफर्ड इन कैटेगरी थ्री विल बी योर ब्रॉड स्पेक्ट्रम एंटीबायोटिक दैट इज अमोक्सीन एज वेल एज क्लेवलिनिक एसिड सो लेट एस सी सम ऑफ द फीचर्स सो अकॉर्डिंग टू द रेफरेंस फ्रॉम द रेबीज प्रोफलैक्सिस uh uh 2019 guidelines so they say that according to the ncdc website so there are category 1 category 2 and category 3 what is category 1 category 1 there will be intact skin and there are contact of intact skin with uh, secretions secretions of rabid animals and this the touching and feeding of animals will be there so you need not go for anything you can go for only wash the exposed area with soap and water and apply antiseptic in case of category 2 there will be nibbling of uncovered skin and minor scratches will be present without bleeding without bleeding and here you should go for wound management for wound management means you need to wash the wound with the help of water and soap for at least a 15 minutes and you should go for rabies vaccination and third category is a single or multiple transdermal bites or scratches and there will be abraded screen or broken skin and there will be contamination of the mucous membrane with the saliva of the animal due to the lick so apart from the wound management and the rabies vaccination here you should go for the rabies immunoglobulin treatment rabies immunoglobulin treatment in case of the category 3 so these are the things you should go according to the guidelines that is what are the approach to the post exposure prophylaxis that is the post exposure prophylaxis is three pronged approach so all are equally important and they should be done simultaneously as per the category of the exposure so you need to do the management of the animal bind of the wound with washing with washing with the soap and water and there should be passive immunization with the rig that is the rabies immunoglobulin and active immunization with the anti rabies vaccines three things should be done based on the category so usually this will be your cat one only the washing and this two will be your cat two and all this will be your cat three category three so usually wound management means there will be washing with the running water washing with the running water and wash after washing with the soap and water you need to apply the antiseptic and also you you can infiltrate the, the wound surroundings with the immunoglobulin into the depth and around the wounds around the wound just to neutralize the virus neutralize the virus antiseptic is applied to basically to inactivate the virus whereas the immunoglobulins are given to neutralize the neutralize the virus so please uh, uh, take care do not touch with the bare hands and do not put any irritants like soil chili lime or any herbal medications so what happens if there is a, a for exposed or re exposed patient please remember very very important this is for the patient who are exposed or re exposed again what you should do who has already documentation of pre exposure prophylaxis as well as the post exposure uh, prophylaxis what are the guidelines so the important guidelines you should follow is the basic thing proper wound management has to be done whether is uh, 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 vaccinated or not and there is no need for administration of again the immunoglobulin rabies immunoglobulin so what you can do is properly thorough wash with water and soap has to be done for at least a 15 minutes and you should go for either one side intradermal vaccination one side intradermal vaccination on day 0 and 3 or intramuscular administration one side intramuscular administration of entire vaccination vial on day 0 or day 3 day 0 or day 3 and very important only adequate wound washing should be uh, would be required in case of re exposure where animal bite victim has a documentation proof of completed post exposure prophylaxis or pre exposure prophylaxis within the last 3 months within the last 3 months if there is a last 3 months they have uh, they have a vaccination vaccination then just a 
washes enough washes enough is that clear fine so these are some of the guidelines or a schedule which is given according to the nc dc website post exposure prophylaxis either intradermal intramuscular intramuscular means will go for deltoid muscle here deltoid muscle in case of adult whereas in case of infants you go for anterolateral muscles anterolateral muscles so you can see the schedule here there is a four days you need to go day zero day three day seven day eight here also there is a five day schedule with respect to intramuscular so please remember this is the four day schedule four days four days and this is five days zero three one four and twenty eight in case of pre-exposure pre-exposure there's zero one and booster dose on either days 21 or 28 three doses basically here also there is a zero seven and either 21 or 28 three doses whereas re-exposure what you need to do day zero day three two doses so please remember for post exposure prophylaxis you should uh, you should you will be going for uh, what is the number of doses four times uh, with intradermal with intramuscular five times injection whereas pre-exposure prophylaxis it is three times three times whereas the re-exposure it is two two how to remember pre-exposure you will be having lesser dose pre-exposure and you have gone with the post-exposure prophylaxis already animal has bitten no vaccination you will go with increased dose four and the five whereas already you have uh, 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 immunized and there is a re-exposure re-exposure there will be lesser dose two doses is enough so and next question was they said there was a question regarding the thalidomide mechanism of action so where did you see the thalidomide uh, uh, nowadays thalidomide is one of the teratogenic drug teratogenic drug which teratogenic drug which was causing phocomalia phocomalia which is a seal like limb deformity seal like limb deformity basically this was previously used to treat the treat the vomiting to treat vomiting in case of pregnancy vomiting in case of pregnancy this led to the teratogenic effect phocomalia and it was banned this drug was banned so totally it is now contraindicated in case of pregnancy so apart from that newly the the band has been revoked for other uses not in case of pregnancy pregnancy it is totally contraindicated other uses are mainly due to is in because of his angiogenesis factor angiogenesis inhibitory factor or anti-inflammatory factor where they are going to inhibit the inflammatory mediators like tumor necrosis factor uh, alpha interleukins interferon basically they act as a cytokine modulating drugs basically this is useful in the treatment of cancer associated cachexia and they are also used as the anxiolytic anti-emetic properties there as we discussed anti-emetic property was made used in the pregnancy which led to the phocomalia and they are used in case of erythema erythema nodosum leprosum as a treatment of the leprosy reaction erythema nodosum leprosum as an alternative to the pregnancy loan they are also used in case of multiple myeloma so if the mechanism if they add any of these options you should go for these options i think these are the options which were asked that is angiogenesis inhibitor or the tumor necrosis alpha tumor necrosis factor alpha inhibitor the next question uh, there was a doubt regarding which were the options so cyclosporins as we know that let's discuss uh, the things with respect to the cyclosporin and and that will be helpful in finding out the answer if you remember the option cyclosporin is a immunosuppressant cyclosporin is a immunosuppressants immunosuppressants basically uh, they inhibit which receptor basically they are going to inhibit the calcineurin calcineurin and they inhibit the immunity inhibit the cell mediated immunity basically they are used for treating the graft rejections graft rejection they prevent the graft rejection to prevent graft rejections graft rejection apart from that they also said that something there was uh, there in the option that is the multi-drug p glycoprotein that is very relevant to that of the cyclosporin so we have a, a, a cyclosporin is also regarded as a protein that is the p 
लाइकोप्रोटीन मॉड्यूलेटर विच विल बी हेल्पफुल इन द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ द ए एम एल अक्यूट माइलॉड ल्यूकेमियाज सो दिस मॉड्यूलेशन मॉड्यूलेशन ऑफ द मल्टी ड्रग रेजिस्टेंस प्रोटीन एम आर पी वन और द पी ग्लाइको प्रोटीन मॉड्यूलेटर्स दैट इज द साइक्लो स्पोरिन विल गोइंग टू मॉड्यूलेट द पी ग्लाइको प्रोटीन विच विल हेल्प इन टर्म्स ऑफ इम्प्रूविंग द आउटकम ऑफ द पेशेंट्स ओवर सफरिंग फ्रॉम अक्यूट माइलॉड ल्यूकेमिया सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच वॉज आस्ट वॉज विच इज रिलेटेड टू द पेशेंट वॉज ऑन आई सी यू वॉज हैविंग the infection with respect to the rhino virus so for basically for the treatment of rhino virus the patient was admitted and these were some of the options which were given so if you can find out the whole case scenario that will help in making the proper drug which can be given in this treatment so all these drugs are uh, they are basically they are uh, used in case of rhino virus means they are basically they they cause the the lung infections pneumonias lung infections and pneumonias so basically if you could uh, please help to try out with the come out with the case scenarios so please put it in the comment box so what will be the complete case scenario which was given to this case so that that will be helpful in terms of finding out the right answer to this case is that clear so usually the ticarcillin and tazobactam ciprofloxacin they are used in case of pseudomonal infection pseudo monal infection pseudomonal infection again azithromycin can also be used in community acquired pneumonias community acquired pneumonias so this was some of the mcqs that they asked in the exams if they if you have got any right options as well as other questions uh, that you remember that they asked in your exams as well as if any case scenarios were altered uh, and whether options were somewhat different please comment it in the comment box we'll try to modify it that will help you in terms of uh, getting the proper mcqs that will help the other participant as well as the innocent as well as neat participant in terms of knowing what type of questions that will be asked in your upcoming upcoming exams is that clear so please uh, uh watch this and uh, watch this video and also give a comment and also please make sure you leave with the correct options as well as the case scenarios if you remember it thank you all the best just to recapitulate once again uh quickly so here alkalization of urine was asked you should have gone for if they ask about the drug you should go for the uh, drugs like aspirin barbiturates penicillin weak acidic drug which requires alkalization how do you do alkalization with the help of ammonium bicarbonate uh, sodium bicarbonate and the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor second uh, question correct answer is endometrial carcinoma or ovarian carcinoma or colorectal carcinoma ocp prevent these carcinomas and uh, trophenitide is a new drug which is approved for reds syndrome basically is a neuropeptide then we have a keynote 189 trial it is with respect to the pembrolizumab chemo it is given in combination with the other drugs like pemetrex pemetrexed and platinum chemotherapy next we have vancomycin nomogram vancomycin nomogram we use metzgi nomogram which is a more accurate in terms of adjusting the dose compared to the molingering nomogram if there is no monitoring which is available for serum concentration monitoring and next question was lithium lithium will produce fine postural tremors and we have a schizophrenia which uh, uh, close up, close up in which requires a constant blood monitoring because of the side effect that is a granulocytosis and we have a patient which led to the priapism with respect to the drug which was given to the mood disorders the drug which is causing a priapism is the trazodone trazodone 
and we had a question on the anti-diabetic drug which is given orally and increased GIP and GLP-1 levels that is your the DPP-4 inhibitor the alloglyptin and next we have a drug again on the anti-diabetic drug which causes olivovaginal infections it is mainly due to glucosuria that is caused by canagliflozin which is a SGLT2 inhibitor then we have a morphine antidote which is a naloxone the next question was therapeutic index LD50 by ED50 next we have a 2 positive transdermal resistant breast carcinoma treatment it is your tyrosine kinase inhibitor that is lepatinib then we have a, a kid which has a symptoms of scorpion bite the treatment preferred is the prazosin which is a alpha blocker then we have a beta blocker that has which means that is the betoxolol is the beta blocker which is used in glaucoma which is used in glaucoma then we have a uh, antibiotic which is preferred in case of dog bite that is your amoxicillin amoxicillin clavulanic acid so we also discuss about the whole treatment of according to the rabies guidelines prophylaxis then we had a, a, a thalidomide mechanism all this were the thalidomide mechanism if it was an option you should have selected these options and we had some questions regarding cyclosporin cyclosporin which is an immunosuppressant calcineurin inhibitor if they ask about the receptor basically used for graft rejection and they are also used as a peak glycoprotein modulator which are helpful in acute myeloid leukemias and next was the ICU patient with rhinorrhea organ rhino rhinovirus organism infection and they asked about the what are the antibiotic for this infections thank you